we are building the drive rail assembly. For this step, you're going to need two of the 408 millimeter lengths of C-channel, two uh, tensioning bushings along with the M3 standoffs. So the standoffs are 40 millimeters in length and the tensioning bushings are 39 millimeters in length. You're going to end up needing two of the uh, channel end caps as well as a decent amount of M3 hardware, both the hex cap bolts and the lock nuts. From some of the previous steps, you're going to need basically the 75 millimeter single sprocket, the 90 millimeter single sprocket, the drive wheel assembly, uh, the chain links that you made, as well as two of the full ultra planetary gearbox assemblies. The tools that we're going to end up needing for this step is a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, your 5.5 millimeter crescent wrench, as well as a 5.5 millimeter nut driver. For us to begin, what we're going to want to do is kind of clear some space so that we have some space here to work. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to move some of our tools aside as well as these things. And we'll move one piece of the channel aside. What we want to start off with is a single piece of channel as well as one of our motors here as we want to go ahead and attach our motors to the channel itself. So with Mechanum, drivetrains, you need to have both of your motors powered. So that's the reason why we have two of these gearbox assemblies. For the first one, we're going to have the wheel is going to be directly driven and off of the back. So we're going to have that located four holes over from the back. And we want to center this on that location. So we're going to go ahead and make sure that this is centered. And then we're going to want to take some of our M3 hardware and go ahead and drop this into place here. Once we get the hex cap bolts placed in, what we're going to want to do is go ahead and hold on to those hex cap bolts and flip the whole assembly over so then we're able to have access to uh, the bottom ends of the bolts themselves. And then we can end up taking our nylock nuts and start finger starting them onto these hex cap bolts. Now that we have these started, we can go ahead and take our crescent wrench and our nut driver here, and we can go ahead and tighten these down. Once that's in place, we just want to double check and make sure that our output is centered onto this hole, and it looks like we are, so we're, we're good to go from there. Our next step is we're going to want to go ahead and add on our second motor. So this motor we're going to be using to connect to via chain to the front of the robot for the second set of Mechanum uh, wheels. So we want to end up having this motor placed in the center so that the chain that we pre uh, broke earlier uh, can be the correct length. So that's going to be on the 13th hole of the channel from the end. So we're going to be looking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we want to go ahead and make sure that that is centered up on our 13th hole. And then we can go and repeat the process that we did for this motor for our second motor assembly.
we're going to get these M3 lock nuts finger started here. Now we can take our nut driver and our crescent wrench, our wrench, and tighten all these up. So once your motor assemblies are nice and tight and complete uh, onto the channel, we can go ahead and add our U cap our U channel end caps uh, to the channel itself. So we're going to go ahead and put one of these on this end. Then we can put the other one on this end. So a nice tip for using these with the C channel is starting with the hole in the center of the channel itself. Since that hole is not slotted, mm -hmm. the, the center hole is a, an individual hole itself. So it makes it really easy for you to be able to fit the M3 hardware through where the top and bottom holes are a little slot are slotted a little bit. So it can make it a little bit more difficult for you to be able to get them in as a starter hole. Uh, so that makes it easier just to kind of start from the middle and then work your way out. So we're gonna go ahead and put in our top one here. and then get the bottom one started. Once you get the end caps on the channel, it's now time for us to get the shaft assemblies in place. So we're going to want to go ahead and grab the drive shaft assembly and the two single sprocket shaft assemblies that we set aside earlier. We're going to want to go ahead and start by taking off the shaft collars on the single sprocket shaft assemblies. So we take off the one and now we're going to take off the other. And we're going to just want to set these shaft collars aside as we may be using them later. Next, we want to go ahead and take the shaft collar and the mechanum wheel off of the drive assembly because it was mainly used to be able to as a guide for the spacer stack that is on here. So we're going to start by going ahead and finding the set screw for the shaft collar. We're going to go ahead and loosen that off, take off the shaft collar and set that aside, as well as we want to go ahead and take the mechanum wheel and set that aside. There's also going to be a three millimeter spacer and a long through bore bearing that we want to pull off and set those aside until we go through the final assembly. Now with the drive shaft, we want to go ahead and put that in the back ultra planetary over here. Get that all nice and set in. Next, we want to take the shorter of the two single shaft assemblies and put that into the next ultra planetary over here, followed by the long version of the uh, single sprocket shaft assembly. This is you're going to want to put this in the fourth bearing seat from the end so it's able to mirror what's going on with the wheel that's going to be driven directly by the ultraplanetary 
over here. Take one of our shaft collars that we were using previously. We want to put that onto the end here and then tighten that shaft collar in place. Once we have the shaft assemblies uh, in place, what we want to then do is get our chain set up. So we have our pre-cut chain uh, that we did in an earlier step here. And then we also want to go ahead and grab two of the standoffs as well as two of the tensioning bushings so that we're able to utilize these to make sure that we get good chain wrap on our sprockets. So what we're going to do is we're first going to just take one of our standoffs as well as one of the hex cap screws and we're going to want to put this uh, standoff inside of one of the angle slotted holes that are on the channel itself. But we want to be as close as we can get to the sprocket so that we're able to make sure that it has good chain wrap. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get this over here to make sure that we can kind of get that chain wrap that we're looking for. I would recommend with these just to kind of finger tighten them for now and you can kind of let them be loose um, as it makes it easier for you to install the chain and you can come back and tighten them in a later step. Now we want to go ahead and duplicate and do the same thing over here with the other single sprocket assembly. All right, now that we have these two in place, it is now time for us to go ahead and put our chain on. Now with the chain, what we want to do is we want to put it around the one that is on the ultraplanetary gearbox first, and then basically we want to angle the shaft on the other to be able to get this to, to run up and over. We want to make sure that we get the chain seated on the sprocket that is inside of the gearbox for the motor first before kind of going over to our other one and getting it started on this sprocket. Once you kind of get it, it started so you can see that we have like a tooth or two engaged, you can go ahead and take your nut driver and put this on the end of the hex shaft and just kind of twist this down until the chain basically will seat itself on board. Now we know that this is all in and this isn't going to be going anywhere and we're able to continue to go through the rest of this process. What we're going to want to start with is going ahead and tightening up these uh, tensioners just a little bit here so that we're able to get this to work the way that we want it to. Get that in here. And we're going to want to grab our tensioning bushings and slide those on top of the standoffs now. Once we end up having the tensioning bushings on, we're able to go ahead and get our other piece of channel that we set aside earlier, and then, and, and then placing this up and over and making sure that our shaft assemblies are gonna be riding in the same bearing holes as they were on the main uh, channel here. So we basically just kind of push those in and get that all set up and squared away. Once this is set, what we want to be doing is we want to basically screw in on the two uh, U-cap assemblies that are on the side. So we're going to go ahead and let's attach in our end caps. So we'll get that one started. And we'll go ahead and we'll start another one over here.
Uh, once you get them started, you can go ahead and finish tighten these in to the other end of the channel. Once the end caps are in place, what we're going to want to go ahead and do now is get our tensioning bushings attached in on the other side. So we just want to go ahead and make sure that we align those and get the rest of our, our two other pieces of our hex cap M3 hardware. We go ahead and line that up and just kind of get these started. Once you get them started, you can take your nut driver and finish to drive this down. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is put some pressure on the tensioner itself that's down in here and push this kind of forward and forward or down towards the chain so that you're able to get this tightened in so that the chain ends up having the, the tension that you're, that you're gonna want it to have um, to make sure that you have a good amount of chain wrap. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here on our second tensioner. All right. Once the tensioners are in place, your drive rail assembly is complete. You're gonna to need to repeat these steps for one more uh, to be able to complete the Mechanum drivetrain.